Praise the Lord, everybody. Hope today has been a good day for you, that God has been good to you and blessed you, and that you've been aware of the presence of God. There's no doubt that God's been good to you, but uh, sometimes we are uh, in the midst of the goodness. We are unaware of, of His presence. So I hope you've been aware of His presence today. And... Uh, You've been able to give thanks to God for that. I was thinking last night um, about prayer, family prayer that we have on Tuesday night. And I was encouraged when I thought about uh, the different places across southeastern Arizona where people were praying that I knew of that were connected to uh, the Hope Center and Apostolic Truth Tabernacle. And... Uh, so it was an encouraging thing to me to just think of people all across southeastern Arizona who were praying and getting a hold of God and thanking God for His blessings and His goodness and His mercy and asking God for His direction in their life. Um, I want to mention uh, about Brother Joe. I think everybody knows that Brother Joe passed away this week. And... Uh, the family contacted me today and there will not be any memorial service for him at this time. Um, what's the deal? The deal is that with the coronavirus going on, they're greatly restricted with funerals on how many they still uh, are restricted to under 10 people and the whole uh, social distancing and so on. And they said they have one family with more than 10 in alone. So um, they're going to wait and they're going to have a memorial service for him later on when things are better. And uh, I know that many of you will want to go to that and uh, celebrate Joe's life. So uh, I ask you to pray for uh, Joe's family of the Davises that God would move upon them and give them encouragement and peace in their time of trouble. Uh, also want to pray, uh, and we will pray just for a little while for Sister Jolene's, it's her cousin's family, her cousin passed away. Um, in fact, let's just pray. Let's just pray right now for Sister Jolene's cousin's family and for the Davis family that God would move upon them and, and that His blessings would be in their lives and He would give them peace and strength and comfort. Can we pray? Lord, we thank You, God, for Your goodness and Your blessing and Your mercy. We thank You, God, for all that You've done for us. We thank You, God, for the move of Your Spirit, God, that we felt again and again and again. God, we ask, God, for Your Spirit to move upon uh, Sister Jolene's family. God, touch them. Let your power flow up on their lives. God, let your spirit give them comfort and peace in this time of trouble for them. Lord, we also ask you to pray, ask you if you would touch, Lord, and we pray for the Davison family. God, move upon the Davis family, Lord. Let your spirit touch them. Let your power move upon them. Touch each individual in their family. and Do for them what needs to be done, God. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. On a brighter note, uh, Sister Jolene had a testimony that was very exciting. Uh, she's been praying for her brother and sister for many, many years uh, that they would live for God. And she just got word, I believe it was today, that they were baptized in Jesus' name today. And so we thank God for that. We uh, give God glory for that and give honor. So if you're praying for somebody in your family, if you're praying for a friend, and uh, it seems like that, that they are not making any more progress to God, don't give up. Continue to pray for them. Continue to reach out to God and believe that God will uh, move up on their lives and God will touch them and help them and bless them. We're going to... Uh, start where we uh, left off uh, on our Bible study tonight. 
Um, in fact, if you could turn with me to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter number 55, 55 verses 6 and 7. We started off with uh, uh, Isaiah last week and Proverbs. We'll read from Isaiah today, Isaiah 55, 6 and 7 again, as we let, read last week. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Here's the important things. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly... Hey, we're back, I hope. Sorry about that. Um, we're desperately trying here. Well, we're talking about Jeremiah chapter number 4, verse number uh, 14, I believe. It says, O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within me? A lodging thought is a thought that was a tempting thought, and that we've embellished it, that we allow it to stay and we work on it and embellish it in our minds and think about it and and it would become uh it, it takes up residence there it's a part of us it's a part of who we are and and it it would be something that we would uh, pursue if we felt that we could get away with it if we could that we would pursue it and and that we would uh uh, try to make it a reality in our lives. Uh, a, a lodging thought is an intent. In the book of Hebrews, chapter number 4, we're going to read from the Word of God. Hebrews chapter number 4 and verse number 14. It says, Seeing that we have Excuse me, 412. Here we go again. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing asunder even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So uh, a tempting thought is a thought that we never intend to act upon, but we did not, uh, did not intentionally um, even bring to our mind, but it just came unexpectedly, and, and we weren't trying to figure something out to make it become a reality, but the Bible talks about there's, there's a, a discern, that the Word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So whenever you have a random thought come into your mind, that's a whole different deal than when you have something that comes into your mind and then you think about it and you concentrate on it and, and you try to make it a reality. And at that point in time, if it's a thought that is wrong, that is, is sin in our lives. And uh, we can commit sin in our life with our thought life and it doesn't have to be something that as of yet we have participated in only in our thoughts and so we need to make a very great concentrated effort to train our mind that we're going to focus on good things because the carnal mind produces lodging thoughts the carnal mind produces lodging thoughts in the book of Romans Chapter number 8 and verse number 5. Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 5. Reading through verse number 7. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. 
And so the carnal mind is producing uh, these lodging thoughts that will cause us, uh, it can cause us to lose out with God if we're not careful. Some more scriptures on the carnal mind. Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 17. Ephesians 4, verse number 17 through 19. This I say therefore and testify in the, in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as the other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to un, unto lasciviousness to work all, all uncleanness with greediness. And so uh, there is this concept here that uh, it's taken one step at a time it's saying not to walk as the other Gentiles walk in the vanity of your mind because it takes you into all of these other things. It, it darkens your understanding. It alienates you from the life of God. And so it's a very dangerous thing. In the book of Colossians, chapter number 1, and verse number 21, Colossians 1, 21, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he hath reconciled. So this is saying that there is there are people that have been reconciled, thank God, but it says at one time you were alienated and enemies in your mind. Enemies in your mind. So Colossians 2.18 says, let no man beguile you of your reward in voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. And so we can see that, that, the, that the carnal mind, the Bible says, is enmity against God. And it is a place for lodging thoughts to, to grow. It's a place for uh, tempting thoughts to become lodging thoughts and become a reality of, of producing sin in our lives. But there is an antidote. There is an antidote. We don't have to go around and just say, you know, I, I, there's just no hope for me because I have all these thoughts and, and I, am, I am struggling to control these thoughts in my mind. There, there is an antidote. Uh, and if we take care of God's business, He'll take care of our business. In the book of Proverbs, chapter number 16, you can turn with me there, Proverbs, chapter number 16, and verse number 3, it tells us, it's, it's a key scripture here, a very much a key scripture that tells us uh, about our thoughts and, and what God will do for us if we really want to control our thoughts. You see, controlling our thoughts uh, comes from having a relationship with God. It's very difficult for people to not have impure thoughts and to not have problems and and in, in uh, places uh, such as vengeful thoughts and things like that. It is uh, very hard for people to control that without God's presence upon them. But uh, Proverbs 16, 3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Very key scripture here. Commit thy works unto the Lord, unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. And so what it's telling us to do is that we are through uh, our own will, that we are starting to say, I'm going to do the work of God. Uh, sometimes people may struggle to be involved in the work of God because of their thoughts, but the Bible says commit 
thy, thy work unto the Lord and thy thoughts will be established. God will help us with our thoughts if we'll do our part to do the work of God. Um, James 2, 17 and 18 says, Even so faith, if it hath not works, it's dead, being alone. Yet, yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee thy, my, by my faith by my works. And so commit thy works unto the Lord. Thy thoughts shall be established. You're showing faith that God is going to do something for you to help you with your thoughts when you commit your works unto the Lord and do the will and the work of God. And so what are examples of works committed unto the Lord? Uh, you may say, well, I don't, I don't know how I can be uh, pursuing after the things of God when I have these thoughts, but commit your works, commit your works, commit your works unto the Lord. Do something for God. Do something for the kingdom of God. And it's amazing how that God will start to work on your life. In Psalms 119, verse number uh, 11. Psalms 119, verse number 11. says, Thy word have I hid in my, mine heart that I might not sin against thee. And so this is one of the works of God. Commit thy works unto God. The work of God here is memory, memorizing the Bible, uh, memorizing the Word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And so, so we go through a process of, of doing the things that we need to do, doing the things that are right, doing the things that we know are pleasing to God. And if we do those things, then God will bless us and God will help us with our thoughts. But the first step is commit thy works. Do the things that are works of God. And memorizing Bible is just one thing that you can do that is a work uh, for the kingdom of God. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. A work of God is to rejoice in the Lord. To rejoice in the Lord. That's part of the work of God. And so make up your mind that you're going to be a rejoicer. Make up your mind that you're going to rejoice over the things that God has done in your life. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known to all, man, all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. Amen. Have faith. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So rejoice in the Lord. Have faith. These are works of God. Prayer and supplication. Prayer and supplication is going to help you, uh, mold you, your, your thoughts into what they need to be. But why? Because that's a work of God. And back in Proverbs, it was promised to us, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts will be established. So prayer and supplication are part of those things. Uh, meditation on the good things of God. Uh, it says, uh, with prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your mind through Christ Jesus. So, uh, meditation on the good things of God. Meditation on what God is pleased with. A very intentional focus on saying, I am going to, to put my mind on the things of God. Philippians 4.8 says it real well. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And so, so 
we must be intentional about it. And these thoughts are going to come into your mind. It doesn't matter who you are. There's going to be tempting thoughts coming to your mind. But it does not have to become lodging thoughts. You can drive out tempting thoughts with praise. You can drive out tempting thoughts with prayer. You can find, drive out tempting thoughts with uh, meditation on the Word of God, memorizing the Word of God, doing the work of God. And in spite of your best efforts, that's part of our adversaries. Uh, job is to bring thoughts to our mind. It's part of our flesh dealing with these thoughts. But in spite of that, these things will come, but they don't have to stay. And the more you work at controlling your thoughts, the more effective you're going to be and the longer periods that are going to be where that you don't have these troubling thoughts in your life. Matthew 5.44, we're going to read and it's going to be the last passage of Scripture that we're going to read tonight. Matthew 5, 44. Matthew 5, 44 says, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you, and persecute you. And so you have this command of, of doing the will and the work of God uh, to pray for them. Pray for them. To bless them that despitefully use you and that hate you. And, and God is going to help you if you will do these things. You may say, Pastor Ryan, I don't feel like it. But that's not the point. It's not what we feel like we're doing, but we commit our works to God and our thoughts will be established. There's all kinds of things that we can do uh, that are works of God that will help our thoughts to be established. Uh, we can do outreach. You can teach a Bible study. It's, it's amazing how if a person gets involved in the work of God, how that 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 will help their thought pattern. And all of a sudden you'll find that you are not thinking the same things that you were thinking. You're thinking about teaching in a Bible study. You're thinking about what you're going to say. Amen. And, and if another thought comes in, you pull your, uh, uh, your mind away from those things and, and you think that which is right. Uh, giving thanks for all things. We've already mentioned fasting will help control our thoughts. Committing, we're talking about committing our works to the Lord. Uh, helping each other, loving each other, taking care of each other. That's a work of God. And if you're busy helping your brother, if you're busy helping your sister, you're going to struggle with your thought pattern a lot, a lot less. Uh, listening to praise and worship music. Uh, making up your mind that, okay, I'm going to turn on something that I know is going to be glorifying to God. I'm not going to pursue those things that are negative. I'm not going to pursue those things that are impure because I don't want to get lodging thoughts in my mind. But I'm going to fill my mind with good, wholesome, uh, biblical things that God would be pleased with. And you can walk with the right spirit. You can do the right things. But it's a process. It's a process of of controlling your thoughts. And, and this should be something that as time goes on, that, that we are more successful in doing. And it, it takes work. Commit that work unto the Lord. It takes work. Uh, and it's not something sometimes that the Holy Ghost just takes away from us automatically, completely. Uh, but it takes work, but the Holy Ghost will give us power as we work on these things to make it where that we're not having to feel guilt for these lodging thoughts that we're embellishing and that our intent is to do it. Remember that the Bible says that uh, about the thoughts and intent and intents of the heart. And so we, we don't want to intend to do anything that's wrong, but want to do we want to do what is right. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Sorry for all of the
problems today. Uh, for those of you that may have missed it, I'll just go over a couple things again. Uh, Brother Joe, there will not be services for Brother Joe uh, because of the coronavirus. Uh, they're not allowed to have any service that, has, that exceeds 10 people and they have a big family and so they're just going to wait, do a memorial service later and they said they'll let us know so that we can be a part of that if we want to be a part of that. Also, I don't know if you got the uh, gist of Sister Jolene's testimony, but Sister Jolene has been praying for a brother and sister for many, many years. And they just got baptized in Jesus' name today, I believe it was. And so we give God thanks for that and we give Him praise and glory for that. God bless you. Uh, God loves you. God wants you to be saved. God bless you.